Hello dear viewer, my name is Jude and welcome to Foreign Film Friday. In this series I'll be doing my best to review and recommend some lesser known films from around the world and hopefully in the process you might discover a film or two that you really like that you otherwise wouldn't have heard of. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. Our first film of the day is Microhabitat, a South Korean film from 2018 that was written, produced and directed by first time director Jiongo Woon. The film follows Miso, a broke housekeeper whose only relief in the world comes through smoking cigarettes and drinking whiskey. So, when the government doubles the price of cigarettes, she decides to go up her house rather than give up her luxuries. I really, really love this film. There's a consistent balance between optimism and pessimism. It, it covers warm themes of companionship and individuality, but also it, it touches on hard-hitting themes of loneliness and the pressures of a capitalist society. And I think that kind of taps into what my favourite type of film is, one that can play across the whole spectrum of emotions and microhabitat really gets that down to a T whilst also preserving a quiet, darkly humorous tone that I really enjoyed. I think John Go Woon captures the characters so well as well and with each person we meet there are opportunities to really empathise with them and, and also examine different elements of our society. One character might make you consider how we view masculinity, another one might make you wonder how settling down, having a family changes who you are as a person. You know, it's a quite sweeping film that covers a lot of ground, but it keeps a clear focus on Miso and her journey to work out where she needs to be. So yeah, I'd absolutely recommend this film to anyone. It's so relatable and funny and well put together. And I'm really excited to see what Jean Go Moon does next because she's written and directed a really great film here. Moving on then to Fugue, which was a Polish film from 2018 that was directed by Agnieszka Smaginska, um, whose previous film The Lure has been on my watch list forever, the uh, mermaid horror musical thing that looked really interesting. Um, it just so turns out that I saw this one first and I really enjoyed it. The story follows Alicia, who returns to her former family two years after suffering memory loss and starting a new life for herself. Now back at home, she struggles to reassume her position as a wife, mother and daughter, as well as trying to piece together the events that led to her disappearance. The film reminded me a lot of things like Nancy from last year and um, Andrew Haig's film 45 Years. You know, it takes a central mystery that's on the surface isn't particularly scary, but it finds ways to instill a really eerie atmosphere that can make you feel really uncomfortable. You know, there's lots of imagery in this film that's quite disturbing and the camera work is rarely static. It's always creeping around the room and the end result is something that's really darkly compelling throughout. The direction from Smutinska is excellent, but arguably the star of the show is Gabriela Muscawa who, as well as putting in a pitch-perfect performance as Alicia, also wrote the film. Um, it's a story filled with conflicts and contradictions surrounding family and psychology. You know, it takes subtle twists and turns that really make you reflect on the characters and the situation. Through all the darkness, though, there's a surprising poignancy to the film as well. And, you know, it's not a film that I'm going to easily forget. There's lots of really interesting stuff in here. So I definitely recommend checking Fugue out, especially if you like dark psychological films. And then finally then, Alps. This is a Greek film from 2011 and serves as Yorgos Lantzmos' follow-up to his critically acclaimed film Dogtooth. The story follows a small organisation called Alps, who take it upon themselves to impersonate people once they die to help their relatives cope with the grieving process. I thought this was a really interesting film, and if you're at all familiar with the Greek weird wave, then you sort of know what you're getting into with Alps. You know, it's a very strange film with no obvious narrative structure, it has a very dark, absurdist sense of humour. Something I've come to really like in Lance Moses films is the way characters speak dialogue. It's always very robotic, and they speak in a stilted sort of manner. And I think in Alps, it arguably works better than it does in any of his other films. Alps makes a clear distinction between a person's character and a person's personality traits. The mourning relatives are quickly satisfied and impersonated can copy something that their deceased family member would do or simply reiterate what their favourite food would have been, even if it's quite clearly an act. And with that robotic way of speaking, the film is constantly reminding you of that disconnect, as well as removing the humanity which allows for some of the film's more brutal moments. Angelique Papulia in the lead is great, she has more of these lines than most, and she puts in a great performance as a character who is at odds with herself and finds herself increasingly taken over by a need to be someone else and to be loved. The lack of narrative structure and muted approach makes it difficult to feel the full potential impact of these themes sometimes, and any emotional payoff is probably lacking. And as a result, it really wouldn't be difficult to understand why someone would find this film dull. But Overall, I thought Alps was a clever, challenging, and occasionally funny film about identity and how we try and fit in. It's not highly entertaining, but maybe it's not trying to be, and ultimately Lance Moss leaves you with plenty of food for thought. So yeah, I definitely recommend this if you're interested in the Greek weird wave, or if you're a fan of Lance Moss's films, you'll definitely get something out of this. 
And that's it. Thanks for getting this far. I'd love to hear recommendations for films I should cover on Foreign Film Friday. So please do leave them down in the comments below or get in touch on Twitter at AllThatFilmPod. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the All That Film YouTube channel. I've been Jude. You've been wonderful. See you next time.